Hey everyone, in today's Photoshop video, I want to show you how to change a background behind someone inside of Photoshop 2020. Now the ability to do this in Photoshop has been around for quite some time, but now there is a new selection called Object Selection Tool that makes it super simple and almost automated. So that's what we're going to use in this video. And if it's your first time here, I post easy to follow Photoshop, social media and tech videos every single day on this channel. So please consider subscribing. Let's go ahead and we'll just do this from scratch. So I'll go ahead and press new on top of Photoshop and let's just create a new document. And I downloaded a couple of images here. So I'll bring the background here. I'll just drag it from my download folder into Photoshop. Let me go ahead and make this bigger because I just don't want this tree to be part of my image. So I'm going to just expand it beyond the tree here and I'll put it right over here and I'm going to press the check mark on top. Now I'm going to go ahead to my download and I'll go ahead and bring this person here and she's going to be in the foreground. So again, I'm going to resize her to kind of be in the center of this image here and then I'll press the check mark. If you don't have these options here, you could press command T to get them on a Mac or control T to get them on a PC and then you could go ahead and resize it. And in Photoshop 2019 and 20, you don't have to hold shift. You could just resize it and it'll keep this aspect ratio for you. If you hold shift, in fact, it'll just kind of squeeze your image what you don't want to do. I'm going to command Z here and press check mark. So now we want to make this house go away and we want to make this the background. So how do we do that? Previously, we would just do a selection tool, quick selection or magic wand and draw around this person, but check out object selection tool. Let me go ahead and select this from this option. And I'll just have to basically create a rectangle here around that person and let go. And it just automatically selected around them by default. Now it's not perfect. So we need to come up here and press select subject, press that and then press OK. And now look at that. It's perfect around that person. Even this area right here is deselected. So that's all I did. I chose the object selection tool and I chose a rectangle. You could also change this rectangle to be a lasso. Lasso is just creating different points around them and selecting them with a lasso tool. Rectangle works for the most part. And over here, you got four different options is your selection is not perfect. You could add to selection or subtract from selection. So subtract from selection if you wanted to keep her face out. For example, you could do that and keep this section out. I'm going to press command Z. I don't want to do that here and adding to selection. If it missed something around her, in this case, it looks like you got a pretty perfect. And so far from my experience, it's been right on. Then after that, press select and mask inside of select and mask. We basically want to refine this selection. So you see this transparency on the side. If you take it all the way to zero, you see the old background and a hundred shows you the new background, but take a look at the edges here. They could still be refined a little bit. And that shift edge here could do that for you. So if you shift the edge, you could see some of the highlight is disappearing as I shift it up and down. So I'm going to shift it down to get rid of this highlight and refine these edges. So you could play around here, but this is mainly the thing that you care about the most. And it says output to selection here. That's fine. All I have to do is press OK on the bottom. And now we want to get rid of this background to do that. On this layer, you see this layer is selected here. That's our selection. We just want to mask it. So on the bottom here, if you press mask, add layer mask, it will just create it for you and it will get rid of that background. So now we have our layer, which is the person and I could turn her on and off just like that. I'm actually just going to bring the background down a little bit so it looks a little more natural here on the selection. We're not quite done here because the color of the background and the foreground don't quite match. It doesn't look like they're in the same world. So let's go ahead and change that. This part is super simple. Follow along here. Take your background layer and duplicate it. So to do that, we could command or control click and then press duplicate layer, press OK. And then I'm going to take the layer on top of her. So it's going to become my top layer. Then it's the person, then it's the original background. So this new background, I need to blur this background. So let me show you how to do that. Go over here to filter and then go to blur and you want to choose average. This basically takes to all the colors and creates that blur for you. So now we want to create a clipping mask and to do that, just hold down option or alt 
and then bring your mouse right between these two layers. You don't have to click anything yet. Just click Option or Alt and bring it here. So this part could be a little confusing. So just from zero selection, hold Option and Alt, come over here and then you see this little arrow, click it. That will create that clipping mask so you should get a result that looks like this. Now with this top layer still selected, we want to change our blend mode. Under this drop down that says normal, come all the way down to soft. You can see the different effects, but we want soft light and we want to change the opacity to be a little bit lower. So bring the opacity down. That just basically changes the intensity of the effect. So even half at 50%, that looks pretty good. So you could turn the layer on and off now to see what it's doing. And now the effect is a lot closer. One last thing to finalize the whole thing, we want to put a cast color on top of both layers at the same time to now really tie the two together. To do that, I'm going to come down here in the center and I'm going to create a solid color background. Press that and choose a color. So I want to warm up this world a little bit. So yellow or orange is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to choose this kind of an orange tint. I'm going to press OK. And now I got that layer on top of everything. So again, I need to soften this up and blend it. So come to blend mode and then go to soft again, soft light. And then the opacity, I'm going to bring way down this time to about 20%. Now you could see it's bringing both worlds together and warming them up. You could also do this to cool things down with a blue tint or really any number of things to bring these two layers together a lot more. So these two additional steps are not necessary, but if you want a realistic photo, I recommend you do them as well to add them here. Now, if you're happy with your picture, you could go ahead and export it or you could go ahead and crop it if you only want to show the subject more. And I just did that by pressing C and cropping it here. So now this is my final image that I could go ahead and go to file, export and export it as a PNG or export it here as any file, JPEG or anything else I want to export. And it's ready to be posted anywhere I like. I think this Photoshop updates a game changer and it's going to save a lot of people a lot of time. And I'm so glad it's here. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos just like this one. And I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.